This is part three in a multi-part series on multi-area OSPF. I'm doing this demonstration using Packet Tracer 6.2. In parts one and two, we laid out our multi-area OSPF implementation. We've got area zero here in the middle, area one on the left, area two on the right. And in the last video, I configured the autonomous system boundary router and the area border router one, ABR1 and ASBR. I also configured R1 up here in the upper left hand corner. Now I'm going to configure R2 and afterwards I'm going to summarize the information from area 1 using the area border router 1. Okay so let's configure router R2. Router R2 has a 2 network here connected to gigabit 0 slash 0 and a loopback 1 interface where we're going to configure a 192.168.4.0 network. We'll start off with that. I'll get to global configuration mode, go into gigabit zero slash zero, and put in the IP address 192.168.2.2, and the subnet mask, and the no shut command. I forgot to put in the host name, so I'll put in the host name. There we go. And now for interface loopback one. Interface LO1. And this is going to be a four network. So I'll make him the first usable address in the four network, which would be 4.1. And I don't need to do a no shut command because it's a loopback interface and it's already up. So now I have both interfaces configured. Let's see if I can ping router R1. Okay, I can. Now it's time to configure OSPF. Router OSPF1, process ID 1. We'll put in the router ID. Since it's R2, I'll use 2.2.2. And now advertise my connected networks. The connected networks are pretty easy. I've got network 192.168.2.0 connected to my gigabit 0 slash 0 interface. I need to put in wildcard bits for this 24-bit uh, subnet mask, the inverse, which is 0.0.0.255, .0 and then the area number. This is not area 0. This is area 1 because it's multi-area OSPF. All right, then I'm going to do the same thing for the for network, which is on my loopback interface. Perfect. You can see that instantly we have an adjacency change from uh, loading to full adjacency. Now we have a neighbor relationship with router R1. And we can examine the routing table. You can see that we've learned about the one network OSPF, it's an inter-area route because it's uh, the 10.1.1.0 network is in area zero. So it's an inter-area route that we learned from OSPF. We also learned about the one network from uh, router R1. And we learned about the three network, which is on router R1 as well. And we learned an external route, a default route from the ASBR autonomous system boundary router. So that was also propagated. So now we have multi-area OSPF working on area zero and area one. Now, one of the nice things about multi-area OSPF is that by designing the network into hierarchical areas that have been laid out, we can summarize the information from area one so that the ABR here, the the area border router can summarize all of this information and tell the ASBR, basically tell area zero, which then would tell ABR two and then on to area two, summarized information about area one. To do that though, we need to create a summary route. This is why network design and planning is so important. When I planned out the addressing of the networks, I decided to put all of the 192.168 networks over here in area one. So I've got the 192.168.1 network, and then they go in order, the two network, the three network, and the four network. 
Since these network addresses or these uh, subnets are contiguous in number scheme, they will be easy to summarize. So next I want to talk about how to summarize these networks into one summary route. So to do this I've laid something out here that we can use. We've got the 192.168.1 network, the 2 network, the 3 and the 4. I've drawn them out here in dotted decimal notation. And then what I do is I convert these four network addresses from decimal to binary. So now I have them listed as binary. Next thing you need to do is look for the last common bit. The last common bit. So you see how there's a row of ones here, ones, zeros. They all have zeros here. They all have ones here. If we go all the way over, you can see that the last common bit is this row of zeros here. And it just so happens that this is the 21st bit over. So you have 8 bits here, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So this is the last common bit that they all share, which is a zero. So that will be the subnet mask for the summary route. And if we convert everything back to dotted decimal up to this point, you can see that we have 192, 168, and then the all zeros. And so essentially the summary route will be 192.168.0.0 slash 21. The command we'll put in is area 1 range 192.168.0.0 and then the slash 21 subnet mask in dotted decimal 255.255.248.0. So that's what I'm going to put in right now on ABR1 and this will be the information that ABR1 will propagate to the rest of the network. So we go into ABR1, get to global config mode, go into router OSPF1, our OSPF routing process, and put in the command area 1. The range of addresses will be 192.168.0.0. And the subnet mask slash 21, 255.255.248.0. I'll put that command in and now go to my autonomous system boundary router to see if that change is propagated now to ASBR. So put that in, enable, show IP route. So you can see now that the ASBR router has learned from ABR1 that there is a 192.168.0.0 network slash 21 that it learned about from ABR1. This is an OSPF inner area route. So instead of the ASBR router having an OSPF route to the 192.168.1 network and the 192.168.2 network and the 3 network and the 4 network, it only has this one summarized route in its routing table which makes the routing table a lot smaller there's a lot less information that it needs to um, continually update and uh, and we're getting now summarized information now this information this summary information will then propagate to ABR2 and then R3 and R4 once we have ABR2 R3 and R4 configured now if I go back into ABR1 and I get rid of this command. I'll just bring that command up again and put a no in front of it. So now there's no area one range, no, no summary route essentially, that the ABR1 is going to tell the ASBR about. Now we'll go back into the ASBR and I'll run that show IP route command again. And you can see now it has, instead of that one summarized route, it has one, two, three, four inter-area OSPF routes for each of the networks, for the one, the two, the three, and the 192.168.4 network. So you can see the advantage of using that area one range command. So we'll go back in and put it back in. And we want to have that in there. Put the command in one more time. And you can see what's well, going to take a second. There we go. You can see now there is the summarized route that is a summary uh, route 
for all of the 192.168 networks existing in Area 1. Now I recommend that if you're watching the video and you've downloaded my Packet Tracer file and you've been configuring this at home or on your own using Packet Tracer 6.2, that you go ahead and try to do something similar over here with ABR2 and Area 2. Now notice you'll have to do a different type of summary address here. We've got 172.16.1.32 with a slash 27 and then another slash 27, another slash 27. So you want to lay out these three networks in dotted decimal, then convert them to binary, then look for the last common bit, and that'll be your subnet mask range, and then the address will go up to that range, and then after that it's all zeros, so you'll end up with a summary address that summarizes the 172.16.1.32, the 64, and the 96. I can already tell you right now that it'll probably be 172.16.1.0 with a slash, I'm guessing, 25 subnet mask to summarize from 0 all the way up to 127. So the first 128 addresses in the 172.16.1 network will probably need to be the summary address range.